We've had an overview of the abdominal aorta. Now let's take a closer look at the celiac trunk with its surrounding organs in place. The first branches move in three directions and, as is the case for most vessels in this area, are named for what they head towards. To the anatomical left we have the spleen, so here is the splenic artery. This lands on the pancreas about halfway up its tail. It curves and winds towards its goal. To the right of the trunk is the majority of the liver. Hepat being the old Greek word for liver, here is the common hepatic artery. Right in front is the stomach. So here we have one side of the gastric artery, the left gastric artery. This meets up with the right gastric artery to create a loop that slides down the lesser curvature of the stomach. The right gastric artery comes from our main right-sided celiac trunk branch, the common hepatic. The gastroduodenal is its next branch. It runs from the gastric pylorus to the proximal part of the duodenum. The great majority of peptic ulcers occur in this part of the duodenum. If the ulcer gets bad enough, this is the artery at risk of rupture. While it's in that area, it shoots off a few smaller branches to its neighbour, the head of the pancreas. Remember the head of the pancreas is snuggled tightly into the curve of the duodenum. So here we have the superior pancreatico-duodenal arteries. You may know that the greater omentum hangs off the greater curvature of the stomach. The old Greek word for omentum is epiplon. These arteries folding around the greater curvature of the stomach are thus gastroepiploic arteries. The left one comes off here from the splenic artery. It meets up with the right gastroepiploic, which comes from the gastroduodenal artery. The majority of the stomach is now supplied with arterial blood from these arteries. There's a bit missing up here though, which is taken care of by the short gastric artery popping off the splenic just before it reaches the spleen. The other arteries branching from the splenic all supply the pancreas, which makes sense given its location. These have various names which usually aren't taught in a basic anatomy course so we'll leave it there. The last organs to be supplied are the gallbladder, and the old Latin word for bladder is cystus. So here we have the cystic artery, and then the liver, which is supplied by the proper hepatic, which branches into right and left hepatic arteries. The locations and names of these arteries is logical, if you consider the arrangement of viscera in the area. In the human body, form reflects function. So once you understand the relationships of the organs, your understanding of the vessels will follow. Thanks for watching, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time.